Hi, I'm Rui Wen Zhang. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how to do face recognition using SAS VIA. Face recognition is an active research area and has its wide applications in various domains. For instance, security, access control, surveillance system, and nowadays it's getting more and more popular on social media or even just for entertainment. Like Disney uses face recognition techniques on their newer cruise liners to recognize known faces from unlabeled photos and link people from one family or one group together. If you cruise with a Disney cruise liner, you will probably receive tons of photos of you and your family relaxing on the beach or in the ocean, even if you never ask any of their photographers to take your pictures. The term face recognition is quite a general term. One official definition of it is a biometric system used to identify or verify a person from digital images. The system is usually a pipeline of four stages, detect, align, represent, and classify. Face detection determines whether a human face appears in a given image, and if there is, locate the face to return a bounding rectangle or square that containing the face. Alignment, either based on a 2D or 3D model, rectifies faces into a canonical pose and scale so that the position of facial features relative to a fixed coordinate system can be further analyzed. After detection and alignment, face patches are extracted from the background. In the representation stage, we usually perform some or all of the tasks including local information encoding, dimension reduction, salience extraction, and noise cleaning. A face patch is then transformed into a feature vector or a set of fiducial points in their corresponding locations. This is a crucial step and also the focus of this demo. In the last step, we can build a classifier to identify the face by comparing its features to each face stored in the database. The classifier can be a single model or ensemble of models. We can also utilize several types of representations and construct classifiers respectively. The final classification is then done combining predictions from all the classifiers. We use the ORL face database for demonstration. The data set consists of 400 images of 40 people, 10 for a front each person. The images were taken at different times, varying the lighting condition and facial expression, like open or closed eyes, with glasses or not, smiling, not smiling, or making funny faces. But these faces are all in an upright position in front of you, with slight rotation to left or right. And they are all taken against a dark, homogeneous background. The data are first partitioned into train and test set. Nine images out of ten for each person are used as training samples. We can downsize the precision to 64 by 64 pixels, so each sample corresponds to a 4096 by 1 vector, which is a feature vector of grayscale intensity values. In order to classify faces, we would like to investigate the variance in the face space. So we start with subtracting the mean face from each individual. The mean face represents common elements that all faces have, and it can be simply calculated by averaging the pixel intensity values across all images. This is how a mean face looks like. The rest information in the image reflects the variation in facial features. Principal component analysis provides a means to study the variation and extract features in an unsupervised manner. So the first representation method we introduce here uses PCA. The idea is straightforward. Extracting the information contained in a face image is to somehow capture the variation in a collection of faces, and then use the information to encode and compare each individual. One mathematical solution is to find eigenvectors of covariance matrix, or called principal components. These eigenvectors can be thought of as a set of features which together characterize the variation. 
Each phase contributes more or less to each eigenvector, so that we can display the eigenvectors as sort of ghostly phase. And they are called eigenphases. Features in eigenphases may or may not represent in the original images. So it is less meaningful trying to understand what those features are in eigenphases. However, by just looking at those pictures, what we can tell is that eigenphases not only encode facial features, but also the illumination change in the images. With those eigenvectors, we can reconstruct an image from its lower dimensional approximation. Each phase is a linear combination of the chosen eigenphases multiplying corresponding weights, and of course, we need to add the mean phase back to get the actual look. In normal PCA, we usually use script plot or proportion of variance explained to select the proper number of PCs. In eigenphase analysis, it is better to determine through evaluating those reconstructed images based on whether it is face-like and also most of the times based on what is your tolerance. In this example, the top 10 eigenvectors are obviously not sufficient for a good reconstruction. The top 50 may already be sufficient to encode important facial features. If we require a very good reconstruction, we will need around 300 eigenvectors. Once we chose the best number of eigenfaces, we can then use their corresponding weights as a new feature vector which represents the original image in the new eigenphase space. When an unlabeled face is provided for recognition, we can project it onto the new space and calculate a new set of weights. In SAS via visual data mining and machine learning, you can obtain eigenfaces and their weights easily by running PROC PCA. Here is a code snippet. We first do a stratified sampling by person ID to partition the data into train and test set, as the way I described earlier. Then, we do principal component analysis on the train set. Underbar part IND underbar is an indicator created from the partitioning step. PROC PCA centers and scales the data by default. Data centering essentially subtracts the mean, but we do not need scaling in this application. N is the chosen number of eigenfaces. Output statement generates a new table which contains principal component weights and the centered values of original inputs. My CAS library refers to the folder on CAS engine where your data file locates. For more information regarding how to set up CAS server or call VDMML procedures, please contact support.sas.com. The second representation method is called LBP, Local Binary Pattern. LBP also extracts characteristic features of a face, but it's fundamentally different from eigenfaces. Eigenface is appearance-based, so it analyzes the appearance variation from the whole face. LBP instead generates binary code to describe local texture patterns in a small neighborhood. And so, it well summarizes local special structures. There are several variants of LBP. The original LBP operator works in a 3x3 three three neighborhood. For each pixel, calculate a binary transformation of its neighbors using the grayscale value of the center pixel as threshold. For example, if a neighbor pixel has value higher than or the same as the center pixel, it is 1. Otherwise, it is 0. In the next step, we need to obtain one representation of the neighborhood information. So we concatenate the binary codes into one binary string and then convert the binary string to a decimal value. This value is called LBP value. It doesn't matter which direction to rotate, either clockwise or counterclockwise, but once it is set, it needs to be consistent across all the neighborhoods. The starting point of the binary string is chosen by minimizing the decimal value after conversion. There are other ways to determine the LBP value, and the popular one is called uniform LBP, 
which constructs a binary string containing at most two bitwise transitions. One bitwise transition refers to a change in the binary code from 0 to 1, or vice versa. We can do such conversion and calculate the LBP value for each pixel in an image. There are some good reasons to use LBP. First, as I mentioned, it captures local texture information and it can detect important local textures like spots, lines, corners, and edges. Second, LBP is not sensitive to illumination change because it depends on the relative grayscale values of center pixels. Once the LBP value is calculated for each pixel, the image is then represented by a new feature vector, we call it a LBP array. Similar to eigenface, LBP array also retains some sort of face type. Then in the last step of the original LBP algorithm, a histogram is constructed on the LBP array. Consider a 3 by 3 neighborhood. There are 2 to the power of 8 possible patterns, and so a LBP histogram can have 256 beams. This algorithm can be further improved by segmenting an image into smaller blocks. A LBP histogram is then constructed on each block. The final LBP features concatenates histograms from all the blocks. Our method is different. We work on the LBP arrays directly instead of the histograms. We also divide images into blocks and build a classification model within blocks for the same location. Each model now only sees part of the whole image, so it is considered as a weak learner. For example, if we divide the image all into 5 by 5 blocks, we then yell 25 weak learners. And the final classification is done by majority voting of all the weak learners. SAS VIA provides open APIs so that SAS analytics is accessible to popular languages like Python. We implemented our modified LBP method in Python. The first thing we need to do is to read each image file into a list of intensity values, and the images can be stored in folders and subfolders. Then we call a LBP transformation function to calculate LBP values for each pixel. They are further divided into 25 blocks and rearranged to 25 LBP arrays. We build neural network blockwise as classifiers. We start with loading the action set neural net in CAS. The ANN train action creates and trains artificial neural network for classification. Some important parameters we can specify in the action are like network structure, number of hidden units, and some optimization options too. Table and valid table parameters specify train and valid data set. The score action provides the posterior probability of a face being classified to a class. We can build individual classifier on each of the 25 segments and identify a person by taking the majority of the votes. Please check out the GitHub repository to find examples in this demo. For further information, please contact support.sas.com. Thank you.